Water, sanitation, and hygiene and infection prevention and control are both necessary for the delivery of safe, quality healthcare services. But how do they interact within the healthcare setting? Emory created the WASH IPC Venn diagram to describe the relationship between the two disciplines. There are activities under WASH and under IPC which are unique to each and do not overlap as seen in the yellow and the blue parts of the circles. For example, protocols around needle stick injury are specific to IPC, while fecal sludge management is specific to the WASH sector. However, what we want to focus on today is the green area in the middle where the two circles overlap. This refers to the IPC protocols which require WASH services or commodities in order to be performed properly. While the specific activities included in this overlapping section may vary by facility size or services provided at that facility, we generally include hand hygiene, environmental cleaning and laundry, medical equipment processing, and healthcare waste management as key areas of overlap between the two disciplines. So given that certain IPC practices require WASH services, what are the implications of inadequate WASH in healthcare facilities? It can be assumed that it will not be possible to carry out these IPC measures properly and thus the delivery of safe care is compromised in these contexts. WHO has developed a list of eight core components for IPC, which includes the built environment as component number eight. This global guidance recognizes the role of WASH in providing IPC, yet implementation of IPC in low and middle income countries often overlooks the need for improved WASH services, working off the assumption that these necessary resources are adequate. For example, national IPC guidelines may discuss the need for water and soap for hand washing, but don't breach the fact that many facilities in the country have inconsistent water supply. This may be due to the fact that comprehensive WASH data have only recently become available, or maybe because the physical environment doesn't fall within the scope of IPC expertise. But regardless of the reason for the disconnect, IPC policies and guidelines which fail to recognize the realities on the ground are incomplete in these contexts, and healthcare facilities will struggle to implement plans and protocols so long as WASH services remain inadequate. In February 2022, the WASH and Healthcare Facilities Community of Practice organized a session on WASH and IPC, which examined how we can work more collectively to develop effective partnerships. The session featured two IPC experts who have considerable experience working in resource-limited facilities. First, we heard from Professor Shade Ogunzola, who is a professor of clinical microbiology at the College of Medicine at the University of Lagos in Nigeria, as well as being the chair of the Infection Control Africa Network. Meanwhile, Dr. Iman Hawedi is a fellow of clinical and chemical pathology at the Faculty of Medicine at the Ain Shans University in Cairo. She's also an IPC consultant for the WHO Eastern Mediterranean Regional Office. In addition, we heard reflections from Molly Patrick, environmental engineer on the International Infection Control Program at the USCDC, on her experiences as a WASH focal point within an IPC team. So as we start the discussion around effective partnerships, we asked the IPC experts, what are some of the barriers preventing alignment of WASH and IPC within the healthcare facility? What are our key findings? Well, that there was interaction with WASH often at IPC committee level, which is a policy level, but there was really little interaction at the level of the team, which is um, at the operational level, except as maintenance. Um, most WASH activities are fragmented between different units, um, and then IPC WASH still siloed. Of all the of this, sanitation was the most misunderstood. They just saw uh, the wash as repairing their toilets. It was more about convenience, certainly not about health. So we, when we had these discussions, we came out with the idea that, yeah, IPC practitioners, we need wash and the wash needs us. But they were not, they, 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 they were a little less, a bit more hesitant about how do we bridge the gap. I think one thing that keeps coming through is that we have a lot of the integration on paper, but what I what you what comes through when you're talking to the IPC people about the wash people, oftentimes on the ground, one it's you found that issues of wash were not in one place, so there were like four different people dealing with different things, so it wasn't cohesive. So given these challenges in collaboration and the frequent oversight of WASH and IPC guidance, how do we develop more effective WASH and IPC partnerships? 
we need uh, some sort of closer integration, maybe like um, we need policies, we need SOBs, we need like the programs uh, with, uh, with well-defined uh, responsibility for each of the teams who will do what. The IPC experts agreed, integration is the way forward. And what does that look like? Step one is integrative activities at the healthcare facility. So how we can communicate with our WASH colleague. In each of our facilities, we have an IPC committee. It is a multidisciplinary committee. We should in, uh, invite our WASH colleague in this committee. We should encourage uh, coordinated audit tool between the WASH and IPC services. We should share reports and provide regular feedback. Step two is day-to-day -day collaboration, taking integration to the next level. We need to have closer collaboration on a sort of day-to-day -day basis for them to understand. The integration should be closer than the IPC committee, which tends to meet maybe four times a year. We need to have more daily sort of integration if we're going to really change behavior and change mindsets. Step three involves the development of multidisciplinary teams. Yeah, so I, I really, you know, my plug and my perspective now, I think is really on uh, multidisciplinary teams. So really, truly integrated teams. You know, if you're on the call and you're a WASH program, consider hiring an IPC specialist full-time. Likewise, if you're an IPC program, hire a WASH specialist actually to your team. I think you can have really good collaboration and communication structures but I don't think that it's comparable to the potential benefit of actually having a truly integrated team, you know, where you're always sitting around the same table, you're able to learn the same language. And lastly, step four looks at collective advocacy. At advocacy at the healthcare facility, one of the things we all have as low-income countries are that the WASH problems are issues that hospitals always, they don't prioritize. IPC is not prioritized. So if we work together in advocacy to ad advocate to our healthcare facility managers, we would get much further. Uh, one or two of them who did this, especially during the COVID, said they got things out faster than when they had gone individually. Now, in These clips are just a segment of the longer presentations from Professor Ogunzola and Dr. Huwadi on how they see IPC and WASH integrating. To hear the whole presentations, go to our YouTube channel and find the Aligned Agendas session. Their presentations start at minute 23 and go on till minute 58. And the integration will save, uh, will, uh, will save a lot. We'll save the cost, we'll save the time, and uh, we'll provide the best service that, can, uh, that should be in place. Thank you. It's clear that IPC and WASH need to work together, particularly in resource-limited settings, in order to ensure the provision of safe, quality health care. As we've described here, integration is one path forward, supported by both WASH and IPC practitioners, to ensure that we have effective partnerships moving ahead. To continue the discussion on integrating WASH and IPC and join the community of practice, visit washandhcf.org/cop.